Hopefully this doesn't sound like I'm in a fishbowl. This episode aggravates me. Not because it's bad, or because I think it's boring, but because I feel like there's potential here that Ruby is once again shooting over. That and everyone is a moron. The way I view it, Ironwood is a man who has been pushed to the limit. He was made a mockery of, lost almost all the people he trusted, and has been forced to push Mantle to its limit to try and keep it from falling. And now he's at a point where the Protector of Mantle has been framed for horrid acts that results in himself and Atlas being put at fault. The chaos and terror down below is likely causing a lot of Grimm to appear, and he has no idea who he can trust. In fact, some of the people he does trust don't feel that mutually, and don't tell him things that he should know, while also hypocritically having a go at him for not telling the truth. Nora is a giant fucking hypocrite, but the only reason I think Rooster Teeth randomly chose her of all characters to have a go at Ironwood for the secrets is because they know for a fact how we'd react if Ruby was doing it. But in my eyes, I think Ironwood is not necessarily wrong here. However, the show is pushing him as if he was a good person, making bad choices. I see him as a leader doing what he thinks is right, as all leaders do. Ruby, for instance, chose to steal a ship from Argus and cripple their main line of defense against Grimm, because it's more important for her to get the lamp to Atlas. She didn't need to take out that mech. After all, she could have retreated, regrouped, and figured out something different to try and get to Atlas. Better than costing potentially millions to billions of Lien in repairs, nearly killing an old lady who's just doing her job, and nearly costing them all of Argus when that Leviathan appeared. And the gall, the arrogance of Nora to say that Ironwood isn't the one struggling? Anyone who thinks that is a fucking moron. Ironwood is struggling more than any other character in this series, the only exception possibly being Oscar, who has to deal with the possibility that he could lose who he is and become, some, become someone he's not. It, you could make an argument that Oscar might be struggling more as a character than Ironwood is, and I could understand that. Would they rather Ironwood not be decisive, not make the hard calls, and just let the city continue to go into chaos without doing anything that might make some people mad? He is right to not want to trust any random person, because that's too dangerous. Considering what Watts did to his entire military force in Volume 3, it is legitimately too dangerous to just tell whoever about his plans, even if that person also thinks they're doing the right thing. What if he tells someone, and that hypothetical person thinks it's wrong to tell the world about Salem because of the amount of chaos a bombshell like that might bring? Yes, it is true, telling the world about her has its benefits, but it also has potential drawbacks. It's it's a double-sided coin. It, it's, 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 that's just any... Hold on. It's a double-edged sword. It has a benefit, and it has a drawback. Let's say Ironwood tells a very skilled huntsman that he thinks he can trust just because he's that huntsman is doing what he thinks is right, but it turns out that what he thinks is right is not what Ironwood thinks is right. He could sabotage that operation and fuck Ironwood over. You know? There's a reason that leaders don't just trust any random person who's doing what they think is right. And why would you expect Ironwood to be more trusting now, when Jacques Schnee is a council member and some dangerous serial killer thought dead, or technically thought missing, just shows back up again and murders a whole lot of people without hesitation or difficulty even when Ironwood's greatest weapon was there in the room with him? The idea, the absolute foolishness to say that Mantle is bearing the entire burden is ridiculous. Atlas is not only having to protect itself and the city below it with their army, but the show has failed, failed, to show the living conditions on Atlas as being any better than the exception of the school and the Schnee Dust Company, which doesn't matter because we're already supposed to see the Schnee Dust Company as bad, evil, Ooh, douchebags, all oh, really big bad guy, all oh, big bad man, living good bad. If you live in good conditions, you are a bad person. Every time we see anyone normal living, they're either in mantle, or they're people working military jobs and being forced to spend time on the front lines fighting against the literal scourge of life itself. Yes, I know the joke that the Grimm are useless, I advocate that joke myself, but these aren't main characters. No plot armor, they might legitimately be in danger. There, that is a load of rubbish, and I really hope they don't keep trying to push this viewpoint, because the idea that Ironwood is doing all this stuff with severe negative drawbacks because he has no choice and can't trust people makes him an interesting character who's morally ambiguous, and that's why he's undoubtedly the best character of the show. Look, I'm not advocating for martial law in this show. We in Australia had a three-year period of martial law that essentially made it legal to kill Aboriginal people during the 1820s. Believe me when I say, martial law is not trivial. It is not just something you throw on for the hell of it or because you think it's right now to just throw it on. It is a serious choice that can have real drawbacks. But the point that Ironwood is at 
while it's true he sows some more chaos and disorder, it's also true that doing nothing would have the same result. He thinks that if the chaos is localized and kept within a bottle, it'd be easier to deal with once everything causing that chaos is gone than if everyone is left to run free and destroy their own city in defiance, meaning that once they deal with the problem, uh-oh, Mantle's fucked anyway. I don't, I don't think this is a deal breaker for the volume. After all, they could still portray Ironwood the way he's been portrayed so far, and the way that makes him the most interesting. But the way Ironwood reacts kind of makes me think they're going to have him somehow change his ways over time and be a more caring leader, and somehow that works. That's not how that works. There are probably examples in the past where really caring leaders have been successful, and of course there are examples in the past where really harsh leaders have not been good leaders. However, generally you want your leader to be decisive, you want them to be able to make the hard choices if those choices need to be made, and in this case, they pretty much do need to be made. Now, I can accept that Nora's Ruby speech affected him in some way. Maybe it's making him questioning himself a little. But he'd have to be an absolutely awful leader if his conviction can be swayed by some adolescent huntress who didn't even finish fucking school and doesn't have an iota of comprehension about what strain has been put on him and his floating rock, telling him he's wrong by using information he already knows. And yes, I am so stupid, I paused and read this entire document. Somebody shoot me! And also, Clover and the rest are right to want to keep Tyrion a secret. And the way Nora's like, It's the good thing is one of the most annoying, awful, and despicable lines of dialogue of this entire series. She is saying that Atlas and everyone else needs to trust the world with this big secret, while not even trusting Ironwood with her own? Fuck you, Nora. Fuck you. Fuck you to hell. Fuck off. I hope you burn in a fire. Ooh, rage. And you know what? It really pisses me off that Crow barely says anything here. Crow should be saying something here to Ironwood about this issue, not Nora. Yes, good job, Ironwood. Shut her the fuck up. Telling people without global communications is dangerous. Not only is there already the danger a bombshell like that can drop, but if it causes the fall of Atlas without any other kingdom knowing, all sorts of shit could happen. Letting these classified plans and intentions get leaked or revealed could lead to all sorts of backlash and people trying to work against it. Either Atlas or leaders who don't think the rest of the world is worth such a great cost in dust, selfish people who just think it's a waste of dust because they and many others won't have enough to live, people who want to actively seek chaos and disorder, Salem's faction, people who believe it's too dangerous to put a meteorite over the world that if taken down could kill an entire kingdom in a world-time sabotage crash, people who misunderstand and believe they intend to take it out of the atmosphere without knowing that'll make it crash when the dust deactivates, fucking the Schnee Dust Company, who's probably the one who has a lot of their dust being used for this project, might just cut funding maybe, I don't know what they're doing. I get that these people are fucking morons, but at least if Ruby was doing this shit, I legitimately could say it fits the very point of her character, as a simple soul and a naive girl who wouldn't understand the nuance. And Ironwood putting his goddamn foot down is something I like, and more than that, I like Ren's response. He shows some real maturity here, something the rest of these morons could learn to do. Yang and Blake here, oh wow. Not only does Yang not treat this lying to Ironwood thing as as big a deal as Crow and Raven being birds, like, why does Crow and Raven willingly choosing to get the power to become birds constitute a more harsh reaction than not telling Ironwood that his goals might be fruitless and pointless? Did they consider that maybe Ironwood on the side could be helpful thinking of ways to stop sailing when he has a star for creation without having to kill her? Oh wait, it doesn't matter if they thought that or not. Ruby chose for them. Ruby low-key ordered them, told them without their input or opinion that they were going to lie to Ironwood and not trust him. And they have the gold that's on mouth off to Ironwood for doing the same thing when his excuse of I literally have to govern a crumbling kingdom and deal with a million things at once is much better than Ruby's excuse of I just thought it'd be funny, JK lol. And wow, it took them seven fucking chapters to address the death of Adam Taurus to address the blatant murder of Blake's ex-boyfriend, who was a pivotal part of their life, and the fourth ever named character to appear in the series, predating even Yang. And in case you're wondering, yes, it was self-defense, but technically it was still murder. Um, whether or not it's as grievous as intended murder, planned murder, like that's up to you if you think it is right to kill someone in self-defense, but that's not what the point of this is. And seriously, it's hard to argue Ironwood's overreacting. Hmm, let's see. So you know a guy can easily, effortlessly take control of his army. No, he should trust everyone. Hmm, you know that there's chaos and disorder? No, we don't need the military there to both protect their shipments of dust and govern the chaos of the people and protect them from the Grim. No, 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 they can protect themselves. He's overreacting. What he should have done is tell everybody the truth about Salem immediately the moment someone told him to. That wouldn't be overreacting. Fuck you, Blake. Fuck you. I was the only person who defended you last volume. Fuck, Fuck you. And you know what? Fuck you too, Yang. Lying is okay if we think it's right to do so. But if someone else thinks it's right to do so, then that's wrong. Fuck you. 
People can be hypocrites. I know that. Everyone can be hypocritical. I've been hypocritical at times. People can change their opinion over time as well, and that can make them look like hypocrites when they actually they just changed how they were thinking. Being hypocritical occasionally doesn't make you a hypocrite. If any of you have said something and then gone against it, that doesn't immediately make you a hypocrite just because you were hypocritical occasionally. This, though, this does. Advocating for something as morally superior to an alternative, in this case, in, in this case advocating that telling the truth and never keeping secrets or lying is better than telling, sec but than telling lies and keeping secrets that you think is better for other people, and then willingly partaking in that alternative of, of lying just, just because it benefits you to be a hypocrite in this case. You don't want to go with the moral high ground that you believe in. You don't want to tell the truth and not keep secrets. You want to keep a secret and lie to his, fa <clears throat> and lie to his face. Not staying true to your convictions and beliefs because that's just harder. My sister told me otherwise. Makes you a goddamn hypocrite and a terrible character. I honestly don't understand why people like these characters. I mean, it's all right if you do. Once again... It's totally fine if you love these characters, but I don't understand why you do. I hope we can get this straight. If you want to tell me Ruby is a better protagonist than Shigeo Kageyama or Kuritsugu Emiya, you can do that. But I won't be able to understand you if you do. I won't understand why you think that. Then again, if you say she's a better protagonist than Natsu Dragneel, I might be able to understand that one. <laughs> and it's not... It's not to say all of what happens here is wrong. I agree that the morality behind murder is always something that can be brought into question, unlike the morality of lying, which every person on the planet does. In fact, it'd be really interesting to have a character who wants to never lie and stuff. It's probably already been done. It's probably good or bad. I don't know. And you know what? If they didn't want to kill Adam, they wouldn't have. Adam was too stupid to use his gun. His aura was out. You two could have easily just punched him in the nards or put him in a sleeper hold or broken his legs. There are many things you two could have done if you didn't want to kill him. Because of how Aura is written, once it's gone, he's essentially just a normal bloke with a gun. And the moment he didn't attempt to use it, all you'd have to do is take that gun from him and break some part of his body. Yes, Blake also lost her Aura, so she was essentially just a chick with nothing. I'm gonna take my jacket off, it's getting hot. But Yang had her Aura. Remember, it's okay to knock someone out and cause potentially traumatic brain injury. It's okay to break someone's limbs or, or force them into custody. These things are generally considered okay by heroes in fiction, while murder is not okay. So if they want to bullshit me by saying they had no other option, then they should have had Adam, I don't know, aim at Blake with his gun. Then I could have believed Yang being forced to murder Adam to save Blake. Or you could do it the other way around as well. You know, he's aiming at Yang to kill her, but then Blake wants to save her. I guess that would be more meaningful because Blake is the one with the personal connection to Adam that's certainly deeper than Yang. But then Yang also didn't lose her aura in that fight. So, uh, but no, they wanted a Bumblebee shipping moment and a post-murder skull fucking instead of actually pushing it as something they were forced to do. This isn't death battle where a character's morality and refusal to kill is removed. This isn't a graphic novel where the constant struggle to retain one's humanity and morality are key themes as they struggle between whether it's right or wrong to kill. This is fucking Ruby, people. They didn't have to kill him. Then again, the joke's on me, because I'm here assuming these characters can utilize the semblance of rational thought. Also, a small thing, what's his edit here? They could prove it's doctored by just showing the original footage of Penny. That wouldn't be hard at all. And there, obviously, there will be people who still think it was Penny's fault, but you're never going to be able to convince those people otherwise. It, it's, a, it's good to convince people that can be convinced, though. And I'm glad Penny has camera eyes. And, you know, if they wanted to fold to Mandel's demands for Penny's head, they could just make a fake corpse... Oh wait, that'd be lying. But they also can't deny that Mantle wants this, and they have to follow Mantle's demands. Uh-oh, guess we have to keep ripping the soul out of this 90-year-old man. Lying and not allowing Mantle to have anything bad happen to them are definitely worth allowing this guy to get fucked. Let's not forget, Mantle has more people than just him. He's one person. Mantle is many. Their needs outweigh his. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh, that's what Ironwood's saying. I guess we're in the poop here. And before I get to the only scene in this episode I didn't get mad at or find dead boring, sounds Maria's line, Maria's still very entertaining, I really hope one of Robert's fellow huntsmen and huntresses turns out to be working for Salem. Uh, if my voice went weird there, I scratched my nose. <laughs> and that Blake and Yang abandoning the mission and breaking Ironwood's trust doesn't go well for them. Oh boy, they better tell Ironwood that they willingly abandoned the mission and not lie to his face that Robin just escaped. At least if Blake lies, it won't be as infuriating. <laughs> oh, what am I kidding? Her very life infuriates me. Finally, though... Ironwood and Oscar. This scene's okay. Ironwood is kind of interesting here. He listens to Oscar, but doesn't waver in his conviction. He takes in what Oscar says, but doesn't immediately follow his advice. Mmm, I like that. Good. 
Yes, unlike this pint-sized pit squeak, I can buy Ironwood's convictions being affected by someone like Oscar, who is essentially just Ozpin in a new body, because of how close Ironwood and Ozpin were. It's a lot more interesting than Nora fucking doing it. Although I have to ask, why don't they collect all three relics, put them in Atlas, fly it into the stratosphere, hide them in the Grim Queen Ghost, surrounded by airships, and give nobody access to them, with the strongest anti-hacking measures possible as well. If they don't want Salem to get them, and want to be able to conceive of a plan to take her out using the relics, they'd easily give them an, they'd easily get enough time if they had to do that. I can understand Ironwood not wanting to use the staff on Amity, but to like make it float. Like I know some people might be asking, if Am if you think Amity's so important, why don't you just take the staff out and make Amity float? Well, dropping Atlas on Mantle isn't going to help anyone. But if this constant, seemingly unlimited energy source is as powerful as that very line claims, then I could buy it being able to make a cage that can permanently trap Salem and stop her from being able to control Grimm which they could do by putting her into that cage and then making a big rail gun to fire her into space. Oh wait, Limitless Power can, can't do that? That would require too much power for Limitless Energy to achieve. Jeez, this episode. It, it's been a while since an episode made me legitimately angry at the characters. I know people in the comments would be like, But Nemesis, this is intentional to make it seem like the heroes aren't always right, and the themes of the show... No. This doesn't make the heroes just look wrong, it makes them look brain dead, stupid, hypocritical, unsympathetic, and honestly unfit to be protagonists. It's not like the show ever tried to pioneer them as just morally ambiguous or not morally right at all. Yes, they might intentionally be doing this to have Ironwood turn out to be right, which is better than somehow spinning Ironwood as being definitively wrong, but from my point of view, the most interesting, sorry, only interesting choice between them is to have the show not take a stance and for neither characters to be seen as absolutely right, and for the heroes to make compromises just because they don't understand Ironwood's thought process. As for the themes, pfft, yeah, sure. These meaningless themes that aren't given any nuance, they're just great. You want to know why I brought up Kuritsugu Emiya momentarily earlier? Because the themes of how far someone should go to save the world are pretty integral to his character. He goes through so much, questioning his morals, making the claims that if he doesn't throw away his, command, his humanity and essentially condemn himself, nobody else will, and nobody else will be able to save the world if they don't do that. He will go as far as he wants, or I guess as far as he thinks he needs to go, to save the world, regardless of what it means to him individually. Only to find out that there is no way to save the world, and that his whole goal was pointless. He loses everything. It is attempts to chase that impossible goal, the improbable dream, the unacquirable delusion. That is what I want from Ironwood, and I really bogged down uh, this Kuritsugu by describing him like that. There's a lot more to him, but I want a character that truly has depth. And amongst the Ruby cast, it's not hard to look like you have depth. Yeah, it's not hard to make yourself look like you have depth. Just be dead. No, it isn't that hard to make yourself look like you have depth. But to truly stand out as a good character, independently from the context of Ruby, that is what I want from Ironwood. Now, I'm not going to be like the floof artist and get annoyed that this two-second character didn't have his whole backstory laid out to him. That's something Cinema Sins would do. But Ironwood is not just a two-sense, two-bit character. He is an integral part of the series. And that is what I want and hope for from Ironwood. That is what I believe Ironwood can be if they really tried to make him live up to his potential. That's all I have. I know a lot of people are going to dislike this because I have a negative opinion and I spent some time ranting. Please just understand me. Like, don't, I guess, don't understand my thought process if you can't. Just please understand that we have different thought processes if you think that. Don't just bombard me with hate comments and shit. Because, honestly, I don't care if you bombard me with hate comments. The problem is when other people get involved and then there's a fight between people in the comments. I hate seeing that. I hate it when my videos lead to just violent scream fest between 12 year olds it, it, it doesn't make me feel good you know then again if you're someone who disagrees with me and wants to throw a hate comment like you give a shit what i want